What I want from this particular question is I want you to do what we did yesterday, and then we're going to extend on it. So I want, polynomial should be very happy. I want the critical numbers of the first derivative. So what do I want? When the first derivative equals? Zero, because I want the horizontal tangent. I want where it's increasing and decreasing. Intervals of increase, decrease, and I want the max and min. So you do that right now. So we talked about critical numbers of the first derivative. So we have f prime of x, and we're going to pay close attention because we're going to keep moving on. We're going to find out what the second derivative does. So we're going to get 36 plus 6x minus 6x squared. So I can take a negative 6 out. And I'm left with x squared minus 6 minus, that's not a 6, minus x minus 6. And so my, I get negative 6, x minus 3, x plus 2. So my critical numbers, and I want everyone to do this. Your prof is marking you, has no heart, actually. Um, they have a heart, they just don't know you. So my suggestion to you, if you, when you get to your prof, is, Hi, my name is Crystal. How are you? Try an introduction. If they know your face and name, it's a lot easier to help people than if you're a group of 400 people and they don't know you. I would have yourself go up and introduce yourself. I'm not even joking. I learned that like my second year. It was should have learned that my first. <laughs> and my other suggestion to you, shh, guys, is find people in the class who attend class. First off, don't be, befriend the person who goes to class once every two weeks. Um, they're going to just use you. Find someone who's like-minded to you that's there the whole time and then you guys work together as a team. You need a little, little team in all, of your, in all of your classes, especially math and sciences. Okay, so critical numbers. This one is x equals 3 and x equals negative 2. And you know what would make a prof happy? Boxing it. Because guess what? They can find it easier. Makes every person who marks your work happier, I promise. It does me when I see a nice box answer. Oh, and then highlighted. Oh my gosh, my day can't get better. Seriously, it can't. It's like, but I'll give you a million dollars. No, it can't get better. No. Okay, so those are my critical numbers. And props do love you. Trust me, they just love you more if they know who you are. It's a lot harder if you're one of 400 people and you're using it, right? But you don't make. They can't go around and introduce themselves to 400 people, but you can come and introduce yourself to them, right? That was my suggestion. All right. Negative two, three. Okay. You didn't know this, but we have been doing the actual um, first derivative test this entire time. The first derivative test states that wherever the first derivative is greater than zero, the graph is increasing, and where the first derivative is less than zero, the graph is decreasing, which is what we said. When it's negative, it's decreasing. When it's positive, it's increasing. We've been doing the first derivative test without even knowing it. So we plug that back in. You can plug it back into the original uh, first derivative. I would plug it back into here because I just want to get the sign. I'm going to use an eraser, it looks like. I'm going to use negative 3, 0, 4, peanut gallery. So it sounds like negative 6 times negative 3 minus 3, and negative 3 plus 2. Now, if you show it like this in your page, does it show what you actually did? You can do that, but what I would suggest you do is go f prime of negative 3, then your prof or whoever is marking you knows exactly what you actually found, right? Now when we find the actual value, we have a coordinate on what? If we find the actual y value out of that, we have a coordinate on what? What equation did you plug negative 3 into? The first derivative. So you plugged an x into the first derivative and you got out a y. What's that coordinate on? The first derivative, because that's what you plugged it into. Correct? You have a coordinate on the first derivative graph. But if we're just doing um, increase, increasing or decreasing, we have a negative times a negative times a negative, which results in a negative, as much as you want it to be positive. Okay. Then I plug in 0. f prime of 0 equals negative 6, 0 minus 3, 0 plus 2. And I get a negative times a negative times a positive, which is 
positive. So do I just assume that it's negative again? No, it could be a point of inflection or such. Please make sure you're paying attention. I don't know if some people are not. F prime of 4 equals negative 6, 4 minus 3, 4 plus 2. So it's minus, plus, plus, which results in a negative. And that's the first derivative test. First derivative test states that when you plug in a value into the first derivative, if it's greater than zero, it's increasing. If it's less than zero, it's decreasing. So we know that this graph is increasing from negative 2 to 3. Why do I not have square brackets? It doesn't equal those numbers. At those numbers, it's actually equal to what? Zero. Yeah. <laughs> So that's where you have max and mins, not actually increasing or decreasing. So increasing and then it's decreasing from negative infinity to negative 2, or, which is the union, 3 to infinity. Make sure you use the union. It matters. It means or in math language. All right. Then I told you to tell me if it's max or min, right? So this one up here is decreasing, then increasing on the left and the right of negative 2, so that's a minimum. And then this one is increasing to decreasing, so it is a maximum. We agree? All right. So I know that I have a min at negative 2 and something, something. I just don't know what that something, something is. And then I have a max at 3 and something, something. I just don't know what that something, something is. How do I get that y? Where do I plug it into? The original, because it's a coordinate on the original. So we want the y from the original. So it's going to be f of x. So I show them my work. And I write f of negative 2. If you fill these in properly, the people marking your work can actually say, hey, these kids know what they're doing. Once again, I would have boxed this, showing that that's another solution that I have. Correct? Okay. F of negative 2 is 36 times negative 2 plus 3 times negative 2 squared minus 2 times negative 2 cubed. And what do we get? What do you get for a y? Yeah, you want to plug it in? Yeah. Negative 40. Thank you. And then we have f of 3, which is 36 times 3, plus 3 times 3 squared, minus 2 times 3 cubed. And what do we get for this one? All right. Box, box. Okay. Everyone type the original into their calculator. C, is it increasing? At, um, from negative 2, 3, decreasing the other ones, and then find your max and min, see if they're the same. Greatest thing about this is I know that my y max needs to be above 81, and my y min needs to be below negative, one, negative 44, right? I could just set a window properly. So go try it out and confirm that, and then we're going to move on to the second derivative test. Okay, second derivative test. Second derivative test is actually really fast to find max and min. So we have to actually find where it was increasing and decreasing to, in order to find if it was a max or min, correct? The second derivative test is actually a quick way. So, just wait. Do you see this? Is this the right computer today? Yeah. I know. Like, that's almost, actually, that's probably equally as good as boxing your answer and highlighting it. I would say this brings me equal joy. Yeah, sure, it's super frustrating. Okay, second derivative test. We're going to write it down. What is the second derivative test? The second derivative test states that if you take the critical numbers of the first derivative, so the ones we already found, right, and you plug them into the second derivative, if the answer is positive, then that actually is a minimum. And if the answer is negative, then it's actually a maximum. There's a big way of writing this in a fancy form that's confusing. I'm going to write it in, in my terms. So using the critical numbers,
of the first derivative and substituting them into the second derivative. tell you if the critical numbers are max or, max or min critical number. So I'm going to say let's see represent the critical number from the first derivative. So I'm letting C represent one of the critical numbers, doesn't matter, or any of the critical numbers for that matter. Okay? If you plug that critical number into the second derivative, and your answer is positive, which we've talked about as a fancy way of saying greater than zero, right? Then C is a minimum, is the x value of a minimum. So it's the opposite of what you think. If when you plug that critical number of the first derivative into the second derivative, if you get a positive value, then that critical number results in a minimum. And then vice versa, if you plug that critical number in and you get an answer that's negative or less than zero, then C is the x value of a maximum. If they ask for increasing and decreasing, you have to find out increasing and decreasing. But if they ask you if, if a, uh, what are the maxes and mins, you can literally find the critical numbers, plug them into the second derivative, and you know if they're maxes and mins. You don't have to do increasing and decreasing the number line at all. So let's try it out. So f double prime of x equals what in this case? Well, it would be, I, I don't use this factored form. That's way crappier. I have to do product rule with a leading coefficient. So it's going to be 6 minus 12x. Now, do I need to get the critical number of that at all? No, I'm just using that second derivative and plugging in my original critical numbers. So what were the critical numbers? Critical numbers of f prime of x. What did they equal above? x equals, was it negative 2 and 3? I don't remember. Negative 3 and 2? Negative 3 and 3. Negative 2 and 3. That's right. Okay, so we're going to try those ones out. Okay, we're going to plug them into the second derivative. So let's see what happens. So I go f double prime of negative 2, and I get 6 minus 12 times negative 2. And that's going to be what? What answer do we get? <laughs> What's 12 times 2? 24 plus 6? 30. 30. We got there. <laughs> scary. The mental math is a little scary. Okay. Shh. Do I care that it is 30? No, I care that it is positive. So I literally just found a coordinate on the second derivative. The coordinate on the second derivative is at negative 2 and 30. That would be a true statement. But I don't actually care about that. I care that it is positive. So then what am I saying? Negative 2 and something, I think it was negative 44, we found it up before, is a min. Because this is positive. Let's go double check our work. We had a minute, negative 2 and negative 44, which was a lot more work. 
correct? So if I just ask for maxes and mins, I would just get the critical number of the first derivative, plug it into my second, and poof. Unless, of course, your second derivative is like quotient rule with some chain rules in it, and that's a lot of work. All right, let's try the other one. F double prime of 3. So we get 6 minus 12 times 3. Let's hope for the better <laughs> brain math here. Negative 12 times 3. Negative 36. Yep, we're getting there. Plus 6. Negative 36 plus 6, guys. Negative 30. Yep. We're there. So, are they always going to be 30 and negative 30, or is that just luck? It is luck. It's not going to always be that way. Okay. So we know that this is negative, so the negative, or positive 3 and, I don't know what you told me, 81, is a max. Cool. So we just found a quicker way that we can decipher if something is a max or a min. Correct? All right. What does the second derivative give us? Okay. So the second derivative can help us determine if the critical numbers of the first derivative are max and min. That's true. We just said that. But the second derivative itself gives us critical numbers as well. So let's try it out. So if I go f double prime of x, why is there talking the whole time? I can still hear you when you're explaining why there's talking the whole time. So shh. I have supersonic hearing and I'm not even joking. I kind of wish it was half that good. I hear a lot I don't want to hear. All right. F double prime of x. So we want to get the critical numbers of the second derivative. So we're going to set it equal to 0. Okay? We didn't do that up here because I didn't actually care about what the critical numbers of the second derivative were. I just want to get the second derivative, plug the critical numbers of the first one in, and see if you have max or min. That's what we did. But let's set this one equal to 0. So 0 equals 6 minus 12x. Logan, you paying attention? Yeah, totally. You're doing math. Though. Yeah, you and Braxton are not paying attention. All right. What do we have to do? This is junior high. I believe in you. Subtract the 6. Divide by negative 12. We could do it this way, and we could get a half, sure. What way could, what other way could we have done it? G C F. G C F. We can take out a six. And then we'd be left with one minus two x, and this becomes x equals a half. Same answer. Correct? That's in a nicer factored form for our uh, number line. The six and the uh, one minus two x. Okay? So we take our critical number and we're going to put, this is our critical number of the second derivative. So now we're going to make a number line with that. What was the domain of the original? Negative infinity to positive infinity is a polynomial, right? That's why we had arrows on the first derivative number line. So we're going to have arrows on the second derivative number line. And in between here, we have a half. Okay? Do we agree? Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to plug that into the second derivative and we're going to see where it results in positive and negative. Are we going to find out where it increases and decreases? No, that was the first derivative we gave us. So let's see what happens here. So, um, we're going to plug it in. I'm going to take 0 and 1. So I'm going to go f double prime of 0 and plug it into the 6 bracket 1 minus 2 times 0, which is a positive times a positive, which results in a positive. And then I'm going to do f double prime of 1, which is 6 bracket 1 minus 2 times 1, which is a positive times a negative, which results in 
negative. Now, what do we need to know about the second derivative? Well, the second derivative test got us the first derivative answers. But what does the second derivative actually tell us? So where f double prime of x is greater than 0, it's concave up. And where f double prime of x is less than 0, it's concave down. Now, you guys loosely talked about concavity for the most part in 20-1 uh, when you guys talked about parabolas. They were either concave up or concave down. You talked about them as completely and entirely one way or the other. When you're done writing that, put your pencils down because I need all your attention. Concavity change is where uh, your graph actually inflects. It's where the points of inflection occur. Okay? The point of inflection that we've talked about in the past has only ever been like this one. And this was my point of inflection, and it changed my concavity. This is concave what? Down, and this is concave what? Up. And that's the point of inflection we really only talk about, like that true point of inflection. A true point of inflection just like that will show up in your first derivative. You'll get like a plus to a plus and a minus to a minus. That point of inflection will show up in your first derivative, a true one. These are still points of inflection. So if I look at a cubic, but it looks like this now. Everyone paying attention, because if you don't pay attention, I will lose you and you will never get the concept. People will tell me that this is concave down from here to here. But then what is this? Just a straight line? Or is it concave up from here to here? And this is just a straight line. Both those answers are not right, because you need to have concavity throughout, right? There needs to be a concavity change, which is called the point of inflection. So always halfway between a max and a min will be where your point of inflection is going to occur. So that's going to be the critical number we're going to get in that second derivative. That second derivative critical number is actually where the concavity changes. So what is this one? Concave down. And what is this one? Concave up. Right? Okay, what if I give you a different one? What did I tell you? I said halfway between a max and a min is where my inflection points are going to change. That's where my critical numbers of the second derivative are going to occur. Correct? So, here's a max, here's a min. I'm going to get a point of inflection or a critical number on the first derivative of that part of the graph. And then here's a minimum and here's a max. Halfway between there is where my next critical, num critical number is going to exist. We agree? What is this? Concave down. What is this? And what is this? See what I'm saying? So it's that inflection point is that halfway distance between a max and a min, or the true inflection point that does actually just occur where there's no true actual max and a min. But that point of inflection will also show up to your first derivative. These ones will not. They don't max and min. All right, going back. Picking up a pencil. We're here. So we know that this graph is concave up. Where? This graph is concave up where? From negative infinity to a half. And it is concave down <coughs> from one half to infinity. Right? Go to your calculator. Do what I'm saying, please. Follow exactly what I'm saying. So go, you have it in your calculator, hopefully, still from before. We haven't changed the graph. You're going to go second trace value, 0.5. Now, it should be blinking on your point of inflection, correct? Because we said the critical number of the second derivative, do you look here at the half, which is 0.5? Yeah? It should be blinking at that point of inflection, that concavity change, correct? Now, if we are right, on the left of that, it should be concave up, right? On the left of it, it should be concave up, and then on the right of it, it should be concave down. And half, it should be splitting between them, half the max and half the min. That half that this Does it look like that? 
You agree? Okay. New question for you. Do you see why I don't actually put this on a set of notes? It would be here's the equation, and I'll do all the stuff to the entire picture. So here's the typed equation. This is what you're, you're not getting handed to you. H of x equals 5x cubed minus 3x5. Okay, guys. Is that a polynomial? x cubed x5, is that a polynomial? Yeah, polynomials have exponents that are whole numbers. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? What are my exponents on here? A 3 and a 5. Is it a polynomial? Yes. It's Quintus. You guys actually did degree 5 in 30 graph. So the first thing I always do is put my domain, remember? Because that's what's going to help me with my number line. So this one's negative infinity, positive infinity, and once again, arrows. Exists for both, correct? So what do I want from you? I want the critical numbers of the first derivative. I want intervals of increase, decrease. I want the maxims and mins. I want you to check the max and mins using the second derivative test. Then I want the critical numbers of the second derivative, and then I want concavity. Oh, and I forgot to do, and I want points of inflection. I forgot to write the point of inflection. Sorry. Go back. I'm a liar. I forgot one thing. Woo! I want the point of inflection. There are sometimes is more than one. This one only has one. The point of inflection. Sugar in box. I talk and then don't do it myself. The point of inflection is at one half and something. How do I get the something? Where is the point of inflection on? The first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, original? It's on the original. The point of inflection is on the original. So what am I going to plug that into? The original. Which I don't remember what it is. So I'm going to go f of 1 half equals, I don't know, 36, 36x. We'll make it my original. Shh. Do you know, fun fact, that you have it in front of your face? Because when I said second trace value 0.5, it gave you the y. What is it? 18.5? It should be 37 over 2. All right. Do we agree? I just forgot to write that. Sorry, that's not. Ooh, I forgot to box it. I'm falling apart. Okay. I want all of that. And go. I want critical and first derivative, <laughs> increasing, decreasing, maxes and mins. I want the second derivative test to prove it's a max or a min. I want the critical number of the second derivative. I want concavity and I want point of inflection. Go. So I did the first derivative and I factored it. And I got zero and plus or minus one. And I plugged these in. I plugged in negative two. I plugged in negative 0 0.5. I'm going to plug in 0.5 and I'm going to plug in 2. And so when I plug in to the first derivative, um, 0 0.5, I'm going to get 15 times 0 0.5 squared. And then 1 minus 0 0.5, 1 plus 0 0.5. And I get a plus, 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 which gives me a Plus. Now, guys, some people ask me, can I just plug these into the second derivative and just find out what they give me? You can. If you plug them into the second derivative and you get a greater than, it's a maximum, it's a minimum, you figure out how you're working around it. This here is a point of inflection. When I plug that into the second derivative, what's going to happen? What are the critical numbers of the second derivative? The points of inflection, correct? So if you plug this into the second derivative to get a second derivative test, you're going to get zero. And that's a hint that it's a point of inflection, right? So the second derivative test can get points of inflection too, because the second derivative finds points of inflection when the second derivative is equal to zero. Um, and then I can plug in f prime of 2. 
And I get 15 times 2 squared times uh, 1 minus 2, and then 1 plus 2. And I get plus, plus minus plus, which is negative. So this is a what? Yeah. In addition to your point, Bob, I got positive, and I can't figure out why. Oh, look at how disappointing this is. What is that? Some people's children. And that some people's children is me. So what is this? Decreasing then, increasing, so I lied, it's a min. What is this? Here's a point of inflection. Yeah. That's the result of zero and second derivative. And then this one is a max because it's increasing, decreasing. Okay, so we have a min. We have a min at negative one and something. Did someone find the something? What is it? Negative two. Negative two. You guys, like, you start off with like, negative. <laughs> and I'm like trying to decipher through the mumble because uh, you're scared and you don't want to really tell me what it is. Uh, maximum is at one and what? And then I have a point of inflection, which I didn't have to say yet. One of my point of inflections is at zero what? Zero. Thanks for the answer. All right. Uh, then you can do your second derivative test when you plug it in, because I told you to practice it. So f double prime of negative 1, when I plug it in to the second derivative, which I need to find first. Oops. F double prime of x equals 30x minus 60x cubed. Take out a 30x. And I'm left with 1 minus 20x squared. That's not 20. Oh boy. 2. And so I'm going to get x equals 0 as a critical number. And I'm going to get uh, 1 minus 2x squared. This is where I lose people. So I'm going to add the 2x squared over. So I get 1 equals 2x squared. Then I'm going to divide by 2. Then I'm going to take the square root, and I know every single one of your... Oh, well, that's an eraser. How disappointing is that? I thought I was going to have a different color. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, whatever. Oh, yeah. Um... What did your teacher always tell you to do when you physically do this with your arm? Plus and minus, right? When you physically go like this is your arm, that's plus or minus. If the square root is there and you're not, you're just right the one with there, you put plus or minus in front of it because you feel like you need to? No, it's when you physically have to take the square root with your own hand to get rid of the square. So you put plus or minus. Then in grade 10, we were taught this, and you were taught it in grade 12 too because every teacher would have taught it. Um, what can we do with radicals when the whole thing is over the whole thing? Can I do I have to leave it over the whole thing or can I split it? In grade 10, you were taught you can split it. Last year and this year you were taught you can split it. Why would I split my radical? What's the only reason why you would ever split a full radical? And one of the numbers is what? A perfect square. So I'm going to get plus or minus 1 over root 2. You can leave it like that because it's calculus. Or you can rationalize and say it's root 2 over 2. Doesn't matter, they're the same answer. The 0 0.707, blah, blah. Okay? So we're going to have a number line. The number line is at negative 1 over root 2, 0, and 1 over root 2. Now, some people panic and they're like, I don't know what to pick between them. Well, negative 1 over root 2 is 0 0.707, something, 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 right? So we have to pick like negative 1, negative 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 1, 1, and I wrote a positive sign. I scared myself. <laughs> or sleep. 
Good thing that I want to follow. It's a second derivative. Oh. So we're checking for concavity. Of the the like, Why is there a zero? Yeah. Because this right here. This X here. Because you'll go thirty, you'll go thirty X equals zero divided by thirty. Okay. Okay. Then we plug in our values. We're gonna go f double prime. But um, and we have thirty x f double prime of x equals thirty x bracket one minus two x squared. Now we have to plug in our values. So we're going to have to plug in those four. So we do f double prime of negative one. Now, on a test, do you think every question I'm going to make you find every single thing? No. If I just ask you for concavity, what can you do? Completely bypass. You have to find the first derivative, but then bypass all the increase and decreasing maximums, right? You find your first derivative, you find your second derivative, get your critical numbers, do concavity. You don't have to do all the rest of it, right? Okay, so we plug in negative 1, we get 30 times negative 1, and then 1 minus 2 times negative 1 squared. So this is going to be negative, and then this is going to be negative, which results in a positive. Then I have f double prime of negative 0 0.5. So I get 30 times negative 0 0.5, which is negative. And then I get 1 minus 2 times negative 0 0.5 squared. What is that result? 0.5 squared is 0.25 times 12. 2 is negative, so it should be positive. Yeah. So then we end up with a negative. F double prime of 0 0.5 is going to be 30 times 0 0.5 bracket 1 minus 2 times 0 0.5 squared which is a positive times a positive which is a positive and then f double prime of 1 equals 30 times 1 over 1 minus 2 times 10 squared positive and a negative so negative so this thing is concave up from negative infinity to negative 1 over root 2, union 0 to, neg to positive 1 over root 2, and then concave down from negative 1 over root 2 and 0, or 1 over root 2. And where are the points of inflection at? Any of these critical numbers. So negative 1 over root 2, 0, and 1 over root 2. How do I find the y? Where do I plug them back into? The original, because they're points of inflection on the original. We agree? Okay. So yesterday. You had the first set of questions, and I told you to just do the first part, which was increasing and decreasing, because the rest of it talked about concavity. I now want you to do the concavity. Yeah. You have half now. So, um, I'll put it on the board. So this... This is from the Monday, 298, page, or number 33 and 35. I want you to be able to do it, the whole question. So it has all the extra. Yeah. I'll be nice. I don't care about it. Well, 33 and 35 says find local maximum, can't find cavity, and then sketch the graph. So just 33 and 35.